Well, good evening and welcome to Monday night, December 14th. It's Monday in the third week of Advent, and the focus of this week is uh, historically and traditionally joy. And so tonight you see our Kids Zone Handy Dandy Advent Wreath. Um, the first week we, we lit our candle for hope, and in week two we lit our candle for love, so hope and love, and this week we we light our third candle for for joy. And tonight I'm going to have a little help reading the Holy Scriptures tonight, and we're going to be reading from the Gospel of Luke, chapter one, verses thirty nine through forty five. And uh, let's pause for just a moment before we read that to uh, focus our time tonight around the Advent candles uh, with some music. Let me share with you some thoughts from Emmanuel Lutheran Church. No doubt Mary had a lot of things to do, talk to her parents about her pregnancy, which was scary, tell Joseph, which was scarier. It would have been so easy to let these things fill up her mind, to take over her planning, and to lead to sleepless nights and worried-filled days. After all, that's what happens to us, doesn't it? The future reaches into our present and overwhelms us. But it doesn't have to be this way. In the Christmas story, before the suffering, came the joy. Look at the shining happiness Mary and Elizabeth shared. No sooner did Mary get the good news than she rushed off to see her relative. No sooner did Elizabeth hear her voice than she exclaimed with joy, Why is this granted to me that the mother of my Lord should come to me? Even baby John jumped within his mother's womb. Future woes were put aside. Now was the time to celebrate and be glad at what the Lord had done. And God calls us to this in our lives today too. Oh, we have long to-do lists and much of what we do is critical. But in the middle of all of this, God says, behold, I am doing a new thing. Now it springs forth. Do you not perceive it? God is sending Jesus to us, his own son, born a human baby, born to save us all. God is doing this because he loves us, not the faceless mass of humanity, but you and me. And God is making us his children through Jesus who suffered, died, and rose again to give us life. This is the thing the Lord has done. Let us rejoice and be glad in it.
Okay, so if Kate, she's now going to read from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 1, verses 39 through 45. In those days, Mary set out and went to, went with haste to a Judean Judean town in the hill country, where she entered the house of Zachariah and and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the child leaped in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit and exclaimed with a loud cry, "Blessed!" Are you among a, among women and blessed in the fruit of your mother uh, womb? And why is this happening to me? That the mother of my Lord comes to me. For as soon as I heard the sound of your greeting, the child in my womb leaped for joy. And blessed is she who believed that there would be a fulfillment of what was spoken to her by the Lord. Word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. You know, the thing that um, really strikes me from this scripture is um, um, the element of family that's involved in this scripture and also um, the fact that um, we are anticipating Jesus, um, but it seems that uh, um, in this story that there is great excitement amongst the family, the, the larger family that Jesus represents. And um, they know that what that means when they, when they hear that, when they hear that promise, because uh, their ancestors have been told that story for many, many, many years, uh, for ages, that uh, there would be this Messiah that would come and um, save them from, from everything. And so, you know, it's very important to, when we read this scripture, to, to recognize um, just how incredibly audacious and how incredibly um, encouraging it was to in this moment to know that it was close. Jesus was coming and things were about to change. And so that's where we can find joy tonight in knowing that Jesus is coming and that the joy that he can bring and he does bring and has brought in the past promises to light the darkest crevice of our life, of our life, wherever we might find ourselves. That's what Jesus' presence can do. That's the kind of joy he can offer to us. So as we prepare to uh, pray uh, tonight, I uh, invite you to, to kind of focus uh, your time during prayer in on what strikes you about this passage as uh, Sophie, Kate, and I uh, pray tonight. So let's pray together, okay, sweetheart? All right, let's pray. Dear Jesus, we thank you for another night to um, focus upon you as we close down our day, a day that um, has found us um, continuing in a time of pandemic, a time of uh, caution, a time of uh, dependence upon you. Wherever life has found us today, we come to this point of exhale, where we can um, look, look back upon our day and look to, to try to recognize where you've been working because you have been working in all of us. So Father God, we ask that uh, you would infuse us uh, this evening and tomorrow and all the days hereafter with your joy, with the opportunity to share joy and receive joy from others. We pray, Father God, that um, you would be with those, particularly though, that are having a very, very difficult time seeing where, where joy might be during this time, where people are finding it very challenging and heartbreaking to just live right now. We ask, Lord, that you would surround them with your encouragement and you would particularly hold them in the palm of your, your care during this time. So they may know that you're close and that you're real and that they matter to you. We pray, Father God, for those that are exhausted right now, because there are so many. We pray that uh, you would infuse them with the energy, just the deal right now, 
I made just that little bit of energy that you infused them with, put them on the path to joy. We pray, Father God, that you would be with those families that see themselves distributed from loved ones and um, the reality of not being able to celebrate this Advent season together. For those that may find discouragement in that reality, may you encourage them with your presence, we pray. Shelter their spirit right now, we pray, Father God. We lift to you also, Father, the, um, the realities of those that are ill right now with the virus and those people that are caring for those folks with the virus. We ask that you shelter them with your wisdom and continue to infuse in them the energy and the, um, of the guidance that they need to, to offer the very best care um, that they can offer. And may you um, keep people healthy that are at risk of getting this virus, we pray, Father God. We come to you and, and, and we have our head on the swivel tonight. We're looking for joy, and as we look, we're convinced that it's coming. We're convinced that it's here, and we ask that you would just help us in this challenging moment to find it. It's in your precious name we pray these things tonight. Amen.